but I have no conflicts uh, of significance regarding the subject I'm addressing today. So uh, the subject that I'm addressing is really bigger than just rebounding uh, in patients who do not respond to stimulation. What I'm really trying to talk about today is the fact that in most infertility centers and in our center in a very, very pronounced way, uh, patients are getting older and older. Uh, they therefore are also more treatment resistant. In other words, uh, they are harder and harder to treat. Uh, they are, in our opinion, also uh, too early abandoned in most IVF centers into egg donation. And I'm using the term abandoned on purpose uh, because what I'm trying to, <clears throat> to communicate is that uh, in my and in our center's opinion, uh, many patients are pushed into egg donation much too early. Uh, but as we are seeing older and older patients, uh, we are also seeing more and more patients who are more resistant to being pushed into egg donation. Sometimes it's re religious. Uh, their religions may not allow them to do it. On other occasions, they have already children. And uh, they do want them to give a sibling, a genetic sibling. Uh, and there are many other reasons why patients uh, do not want uh, to use donor eggs. And I think uh, we are not doing enough uh, in helping these patients. Uh, I'm always, when discussing this subject uh, with colleagues, I'm always making the point that I'm long enough in IVF uh, to remember the times when we refused treatment to women above age 38 uh, because we couldn't get them pregnant in the early IVF days. Uh, had we then done what we are doing now, meaning stopped trying, we would still not know how to treat women above age 38. But in those days, we were more, much more adventurous. We, we didn't accept the notion that we had to stop at age 38 and we learned how to treat older women and now for some reason over the last 10 20 years uh, 42 43 have kind of becoming an almost mystical age where nobody is really trying anymore everybody is automatically sent into egg donation so i think it is very important that we as a specialty uh, re-emphasize the need to learn and hopefully develop new treatment for women above age 42, 43. There is urgent need uh, for new treatment modalities uh, for uh, poor prognosis patients and particularly older poor prognosis patients. And what I'm talking about today is one such modality that we found out about more or less accidentally. It's no miracle. Uh, it is no miracle drug or miracle treatment. Uh, it helps uh, a surprising number of patients, as we discovered in the study that I'm presenting here today. Uh, but it is overall maybe just adding one or two percentage points to the pregnancy chances of usually older women. But it is one or two percentage points here, one or two percentage points there, that in the end uh, give us a decent uh, pregnancy and life birth chance in sometimes even very, very unfavorable patients. If outcomes are to be improved in poor prognosis patients, then we really need to learn uh, to explore every potential percentage point that we can add uh, to those patients' pregnancy chances. I'm talking today about an observation that we made actually accidentally. Um, 
And we made this observation accidentally many years ago, I believe, if I recollect correctly, while a colleague from Austria by the name of Andrea Weikhoff uh, from Vienna University uh, was doing a fellowship, uh, a joint fellowship uh, between our center and Yale University. And uh, what we noticed is that uh, we had some patients uh, who were completely unresponsive to stimulation. And if we stopped stimulation and a few days later brought them back, some of them uh, suddenly showed some follicular growth. And we, we had subconsciously really noticed this and uh, integrated uh, the stoppage of stimulation into our management of patients. And so in a completely unorganized way, when we had patients who had absolutely zero response no growth in follicles, no rise in estradiol, we used to say to our nurse, okay, bring her back for a rebound in a few days. And things went that way for a number of years, and we became increasingly convinced that there was something there, but we estimated it to work in about 10, 15% of those patients, which is a very, very significant number of cases when you think how poor a prognosis these patients uh, in general have. And then uh, Andrea Weckhoff uh, one day came back to us uh, for a number of years. She spent uh, almost every year, a few weeks with us uh, trying to coordinate some research projects with the university in Vienna. And at that point, we decided, hey, we have been doing this now for so long. Let's see what, what the real results are. Let's do it in a scientific way. And that's how uh, the study that I'm presenting uh, origina originated. Uh, and as I will show you, the results were actually quite surprising for us. We called it the rebound. We called it the rebound because patients had zero response in order to qualify for that. And uh, if they, after discontinuation of stimulation, did show follicular growth, we considered that a rebound. As I said, this treatment applied only to poor prognosis patients who, with maximum stimulation, which at our center means 450 to 600 IU of gonadotropins, completely failed to respond. After four to six days of unsatisfactory stimulation without any estradiol rise and without even a single follicle on ultrasound growing, uh, we then cold cut gonadotropin stimulation and brought the patient back uh, three to four days later. Uh, if after those three to four days, or because we wanted to see consequential growth, uh, really five to seven days, Estradiol had increased and at least one follicle on ultrasound was growing, we considered the rebound to be positive. If there was no response, even after that break, the rebound was considered negative. As I told you, our impression after doing this subconsciously, automatically, for probably a good five or six years, our impression at that point when we initiated the study was that we would find that we succeeded in about 10 to 15 percent of cases. Uh, once a patient showed a positive rebound, 
we help those growing follicles with a relatively low dose of gonadotropin co-stimulation. And we gave them usually uh, 225 IUs of an HMG product, because uh, in our opinion, all the ovaries need some LH. If the patient had a negative rebound, uh, that usually in our program means um, that they are uh, advanced into experimental treatment because most patients who come to us are uh, patients uh, who, who really are not ready to go into egg donation. And experimental treatments at our center means uh, what some colleagues call ovarian rejuvenation. We do not like that term. It sounds a little too fancy for us. It's platelet-rich plasma injections into the ovary. Uh, we have three separate clinical trials running on that. And we also have uh, some human growth hormone studies running, which we also consider as an experimental treatment, even though uh, many IVF centers are using it uh, pretty routinely. So uh, this is the paper uh, that recently appeared in the Journal of Ovarian Research, um, where we are reporting the results of our study. Uh, and uh, as um, the abstract uh, demonstrates uh, the average age of our patient population was 40.5 plus minus 5.1 years, which is a demonstration of uh, our center's oldest patient population amongst all 500 plus uh, reporting centers in the US. And the range was between 23 and 52. And that demonstrates to you that yes, we do treat patients in their 50s with their own eggs. Uh, and yes, we have gotten eggs from women in their 50s. We have gotten embryos and we have transferred embryos. Indeed, it is not even a rare thing at our center anymore. But our oldest patient to have a child uh, from such a transfer is still only 48 years old. And this shows you the, uh, the distribution um, of the patients on top uh, of uh, patients, oops, I'm sorry, uh, on top of patients who failed to rebound and on bottom of patients who succeeded in the rebound. And as you can see, surprisingly, the patients who succeeded in the rebound actually drifted towards older. It's the younger ones uh, who, who fail. Now, and uh, that is also explainable because if you already uh, need a rebound, in other words, if you are unresponsive at the, in your 20s to stimulation, then you must be very close to premature menopause, and obviously that is not a good diagnosis to have. But once again, you can see that we had women in their 50s who uh, demonstrated a positive rebound. So as you can see, uh, there was a difference in a statistically significant difference in AMH values, but clinically uh, it's completely irrelevant because the difference was between zero and 0 0.1 uh, levels uh, of nanograms per ml, so they were obviously uh, equally insufficient. Uh, likely the most interesting difference, uh, of course, and also not unexpected, was that patients who had a rebound ended up with a lost estradiol that was significantly higher. Patients who had no rebound uh, remained at baseline while those that did show a rebound uh, had a significant increase uh, in estradiol levels. So
So, uh, in summary, uh, we were literally shocked to, to discover uh, that uh, practically half of our non-responders after rebound responded and ended up giving us oocytes. As I said before, in all of those patients who made it uh, into a rebound, uh, we got between one and three oocytes. Uh, that is obviously quite remarkable. So rebounds in poor prognosis patients are unexpectedly effective, but this is obviously uh, only a first step because not every egg will obviously give you a pregnancy, very much to the contrary. And these patients, you need a lot of eggs <clears throat> to get even one pregnancy. We now utilize rebounds routinely. So it has not been a sporadic uh, thing anymore. Uh, every patient at our center who does not respond to uh, an initial stimulation uh, gets a rebound. And we consider a cycle uh, for cancellation only if the rebound uh, is negative. And then, as I mentioned, they are uh, advanced into experimental treatments or third-party egg donation. Uh, thank you very much, and I will gladly answer 